Samsung is about to kill this watch and end an era. For those of you unaware, this is a Galaxy Watch Active 2, a Tizen-based smartwatch, the last Tizen-based smartwatch. And starting this year, the ability to use this watch is going to be crippled as Samsung shuts down the storefront for watch faces and apps in favor of their newer smartwatches. But if you're not that into smartwatches or you're an Apple Watch kind of person, you may have no clue what I'm on about and why I'm mad about it. So over the next few minutes, we're going to talk about what a Tizen watch is, what makes it better than a Wear OS watch, and why Tizen's death is bad for the smartwatch industry as a whole. If you're going to buy a smartwatch today, you're either going to go out and buy a Wear OS watch or an Apple watch. But a few years ago, you were given a third choice. Tizen was an OS made by Samsung for their smartwatches and TVs that first debuted in 2018. Given that the OS was made by Samsung, most of the default apps were Samsung apps and all health tracking was done through Samsung. Health. And of course, that means that it worked best using Samsung phones running stock Samsung apps, but it worked just fine with any Android phone. And as a cherry on top, it even had Bixby as a smart assistant. But you weren't limited to just these Samsung stock apps. During its heyday, Tizen had a healthy third-party marketplace featuring everything from varieties of fitness trackers, Maps apps, not Google Maps though, and even a full functioning web browser. For our purposes today, all of the B-roll you'll see when I'm talking about is a Galaxy Watch Active 2, and you may notice it has a few battle scars on it. I wore this watch daily for years, and it has even been dunked in bleach a few times. For specs, it has a whopping 1.4 inch OLED display, 768 megs of RAM, or 1.5 gigs if you have the LTE model, and a dual core ARM CPU made by Samsung. It also has your standard fitness tracking features like a heart rate monitor and built in GPS. But the hardware is not the focus today. Quite frankly, the hardware is rather generic. The only thing that makes it special is the touch bezel. What we want to see is the software. So let's take a look at a few of the more notable Tizen apps. I'm a firm believer that if you're going to turn a normal product into a smart product, it still has to maintain its analog functionality well. And for Tizen-based smartwatches, yeah, that works fine. Alarms, keeping time, stopwatches, all of it's here and it works perfectly fine. But keeping time, that's for old people. I can get a $12 Casio Walmart to do that. What if I want to have fun like it's 1999? For that, we have the most cursed version of Tetris I've ever used. Now you may be looking at it going, what's so cursed about it? It looks like normal Tetris and uh, the long piece is five blocks long. Meaning you could not get a Tetris in this game. You can only clear five lines at once. But what happens when you need directions somewhere and you don't want to use your phone because that would be too easy? For that, we have a Maps app called Here We Go. There's no Google Maps. It's a Samsung smartwatch. What do you expect? And uh, as much as I'd like to give a more in-depth review of this app, I don't want to dox myself while doing so. So take my word for it. You can get directions and turn-by-turn -turn navigation works fine, albeit a little slow on this watch. And remember how I mentioned a web browser earlier? Well, I mean, it still works, so we gotta try it, right? And using this web browser is truthfully one of the most painful experiences you can have with any piece of somewhat modern day technology. I mean, look at the keyboard for ants they give you to search on YouTube. But technically, it will kind of play back a YouTube video, so I guess it gets a tentative pass as my favorite web browser to use in 2025. Now that we're all familiar with Tizen, why do I think it's better than Wear OS? You see, all Tizen watches were made by Samsung, and this meant that design principles stayed coherent across the entire lineup. This means that app developers didn't have to worry about a variety of hardware or differences in software, and design paradigms could stay the same across the entire app ecosystem. With Wear OS, you may see inconsistencies in different menus across the OS, and the variety of hardware, despite giving users more choice, could lead to issues with different smartwatches and different apps. I mean, look at Motorola's flat tire they used to have. You don't think that would cause an issue? By having an entire ecosystem designed and made by Samsung, it means you can avoid most of these issues entirely. Plus, most Tizen smartwatches due to their better integration had considerably better battery life than the Wear OS watches of the same time period. And let me make it clear, I have no objection to Wear OS. The variety in hardware and software can be very appealing and can give you a fully unique experience that was never possible with Tizen. But Wear OS existing and having its own unique set of strengths and weaknesses is not my problem. My problem here is that we're losing choice in the smartwatch ecosystem. Losing Tizen means that the only option for Android users now is Wear OS, and that sucks. Less competition is never good for an industry, and no more Tizen means that all Android smartwatches are at the mercy of Google. I know there are other options out there like the CMF watch, but those are not fully featured watches and they do not properly compete with Wear OS. 
If you want a fully featured smartwatch starting this year, your only choice is Wear OS. But maybe I'm in the minority here. I mean, I've been using a Tizen smartwatch for years and haven't really looked into many super modern Wear OS smartwatches. So if I am and I'm completely off base here, let me know in the comments. Also in the comments, maybe I should be trying a modern Wear OS smartwatch. I mean, the first gen Pixel watch is now about $50 used and I've been a Pixel user for years, so that might be an interesting look. Normally, I'd end a video by asking the question of do I recommend whatever product I'm talking about? But today we're kind of talking about the death of a product, with its usability being stripped by a company who wants to focus on their more modern SKUs. So the simple answer to do I recommend this is no. Unless you want to be really janky and try and sideload apps, it's going to be completely unusable starting this year. Now that my tirade is over, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing as it helps more people find the channel and random tech videos are what I do here. Now I'm Jackson the Nerd and I will see you all for the next one.